Welcome back to the GCN Racing News Show. Coming up this week, five predictions from GCN for the 2020 season. Will we be right? The road season has officially started down under with some extremely impressive racing. The Cyclocross World Cup continues in Nome in France, and another World Tour rider turns to gravel. We're going to start though with the Schwalbe Criterium in Adelaide, the traditional prelude to the Tour Down Under, which I hope you caught live right here on GCN Racing. Now this is normally the first sprint showdown of the year, and there's a great field of sprinters over in Australia this year. Sam Bennett, Elia Viviani, Andre Greipel, Jasper Philipson, and Giacomo Nizzolo to name a few. But none of them were a match for Caleb Ewan. Now Ewan is no stranger to success in January, but he's normally raced a criterium or two before he starts. Not this year, but that didn't stop him taking one of the most dominant sprint wins I've seen in quite some time. In fact, it was almost like a solo breakaway. Fourth place, Jasper Philipson said that everybody's heads dropped when they saw Ewan launch his sprint 10Ks per hour faster than everybody else. Ewan's got a lot to live up to after such a successful 2019 season, but it's got off to the best possible start. Second on the day went to European champion Elio Viviani, making his debut for Team Cofidis, whilst his lead-out man, Simone Consoni, took third. The Santos Tour Down Under will start properly tomorrow, and we have live, free coverage right here on GCN Racing every single day. So you can either set your alarm clocks or just subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification icon, or watch as live as and when you have time, forward slash are awake. Now the sprints there should be epic, and I'm personally very interested to see if Andre Greipel is back to his normal self. So he recently hit almost 2,000 watts in some team lead-out training, and that is a lot of watts. Now amongst the GC protagonists taking part this year, we've got Daryl Impey of Mitchton Scott, who's won the race for the last two years in a row. Uh, he'll face stiff competition from the King of Willunga, Richie Port, and potentially from Roman Bardet, who makes his debut at the race. Team Ineos will be led by Pavel Sivakov and new recruit Rowan Dennis, and we'll also get to see world champion Mass Pedersen in action for Trek Segafredo. Definitely one not to be missed, so we hope we'll have your company here for the race. Uh, John Cannings, incidentally, has also been on the ground, so if you want to see the latest and greatest in tech from the World Tour, keep your eye on the GCN Tech channel in the coming days. The race itself concludes on Sunday on that stage to Willunga, whilst also on Sunday, the Vuelta San Juan begins. And in more good news, we have live coverage of that one too. Uh, making his debut at that race will be John Chocolate Voice Bevan as main commentator, with me alongside him as an expert, if you want to call me that. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that one because Peter Sagan and Julian Alaphilippe will be there, along with Fernando Gaviria, Remco Evenepoel, Jose Alvaro Hodge and Guillaume Martin, amongst others. So don't forget to hit subscribe to GCN Racing and hit that bell notification icon. Another sprinter to get their season off to the best possible start was Chloe Hosking. Unlike Ewan, she had already been seen competing and winning at the Bay Crits recently, and she used that form to good effect on stage one of the Santos women's tour down under. Not a bad way to begin your contract with a new team. Hosking is racing for rally this year. Australian champion Amanda Spratt has had a stranglehold on this race for the last three seasons, and things look to be going in a very similar direction to previous years when she won stage two and took the leader's ochre jersey in the process. However, she hadn't reckoned on Ruth Winder. The American champion riding for Trek Segafredo took the uphill sprint into Sterling, with it the 10 bonus seconds, and with that, the leader's jersey from Spratt. And that didn't change on the fourth and final day. 18th behind Simona Fraporti of B-Pink was enough to see Winder take the overall honours, the first non-Australian to do so in the race's five-year history. Well done to you, Ruth. Moving on now, the Telenet UCI Cyclocross World Cup headed to Nome in France for its penultimate round on Sunday. Now imagine taking your first elite national title one week, and then the following week, lining up in front of a home crowd wearing the tricolour of France, dreaming of victory. Well, it was all going to plan for Marion Norbert Ribeirol until her rear met got snagged and ripped itself off the frame, leaving her having to run to the pits, which is a real pity. Now, after what looked like a slipped gear off the start line and a fall, World Cup leader and new Dutch champion Celine Del Carmen Alvarado still managed to battle her way to the front. However, she was outdone by her compatriot Anne-Marie Vorst in a sprint to the line, with American Katie Compton taking the third step on the podium. The overall standings really are coming down to the wire this year. Uh, the five points separates Alvarado from Vorst, two Dutch riders, and then with the final round in Hogeheide in the Netherlands, that is going to be one not to miss. I can't wait for that one. 
Now with the likes of Mathieu van der Poel and Wout van Aert on warm weather training camps in Spain, the men's race was wide open. Elisabeth and Tonarts both made multiple attacks and at times looked like they'd won the race only for the other to come back. It came right down to the final lap with Elisabeth eventually kicking away at the finish for a well-deserved victory. Great to see Tonarts back on form though after breaking some ribs on that savage crash in Namur. The gap between the top two now is 41 points, so unless Art has the mother of all bad days, he looks set to take the World Cup for the second straight season. Right, it is time now for us to make five bold predictions for the 2020 season. Now, being that this is GCN and, and me, uh, they're very unlikely to come true, but we'd like your opinions as well on this. Do you agree? And what are your predictions for this season? Let us know down below. Okay, number one. Sam Bennett will finish the season as the most successful sprinter of the year, whilst Elia Viviani will single-handedly revitalise Cofidis. Two for the price of one in that one, and given Caleb Ewan's dominance in yesterday's sprint, this prediction might look a bit foolish. But Bennett had an incredible year last year, and many sprinters have had their best years at De Kerning Quickster, so I reckon he'll be the man to beat. Now our Cofidis prediction looks a little better at the moment, second and third in their first race back as a World Tour team isn't too shabby, and I would love to see that French squad back to their best. We've got a poll for this one in fact, who do you think will be the best sprinter of 2020? Head over to the app to cast your vote now. Prediction number two then, Team Ineos will not win a Grand Tour. This is the year. Now other teams have been slowly upping their game and closing in on Team Ineos, and I think this could be the year that they are beaten. Richard Carapaz will lead the team at the Giro, but will face stiff opposition from the likes of Bardet and Nibali. And I think they might have too many leaders for the Tour de France, with Bernal, Thomas and Froome. So, they'll be beaten by a team of too many leaders, Jumbo Visma, with Roglic, Dumoulin and Kreisweig. I think we all want somebody to take the fight to Team Ineos, don't we? It'd be great for the race and great for the sport, and I'm predicting this to be the year. Number three then, Annemiek van Vleuten will dominate the Giro Rosa even more than she did in 2019. Going out on a limb with this one, aren't I? Uh, but given her performances last year and the training she's already done for this season, it's hard to see anyone even getting close to her in that race. More on her training actually later on in the show. Prediction number four, Mathieu van der Poel and Wout van Aert will go 1-2 at Paris-Roubaix. Now this is as much a hope as a prediction, how good would it be to see cycling's two most exciting riders battle it out on the Roubaix Velodrome? And it is quite feasible. Van Aert looks like he's recovering well from that horrible crash at the Tour de France last year. And Van der Poel, well he's Mathieu Van der Poel isn't he? He would in fact become the first rider to win Roubaix in their debut at the race since Josef Fischer in 1896, we think. Everybody though was making their debut that year because it was the first ever edition of the race. Right, our fifth and final prediction is that Chloe Digard owen will win the Olympic time trial. Her performance at the World Championships in Harrogate last year was absolutely staggering. She's back on form, and if she comes anywhere close to that form in Tokyo, it's hard to see anyone getting the better of her. Okay, let us know your thoughts on those five predictions. We will revisit this at the end of the season, if any of them are right. In other news, RCS Sport last week announced their wildcard teams for the Giro d'Italia, Tirreno Adriatico, Strada Bianca and Milano San Remo. Unsurprisingly, all three invited teams for the Giro d'Italia are Italian, they being Androni Giocattoli Sidemec, Bardiani CSF and Vinny Zabu KTM. Interestingly, but perhaps also unsurprisingly, Alpes in Phoenix, the team of Van der Poel, have got themselves an invite to Milano San Remo and Strada Bianca with its 58 kilometres of gravel sectors. That should suit him down to the ground, shouldn't it? Speaking of gravel, we've got another World Tour rider competing in his alternative calendar this year. American Ian Boswell suffered a nasty crash at Terreno Adriatico last year, suffering concussion for the sixth time in his career, and it would wipe out the rest of his season. He has since decided to call time on his road career and has taken up a job with Wahoo, but will also be competing at races such as the Dirty Kanza and Leadville 100. Here's a snippet from his recently released video. Got a lot of time for Ian Boswell, and we wish him the best of luck for his new adventure. As we do, in fact, for Austrian Bernie Eisel. 
He was the latest rider to announce his retirement just a few days ahead of the 2020 season. At 38 years of age, Eisel had hoped to ride through 2020, which would have marked his 20th season as a pro, having turned pro for the iconic MAPE team in 2001. During a great career where he raced for some of the biggest teams in the world, he took victories in races such as Gent Wevelgum and the Tour de Suisse, notching up 15 in total. But he was better known for his lead out domestique and road captain role with the likes of Mark Cavendish and for being one of the most respected senior members of the peloton. A crash in 2018 left him with a brain injury that could have ended his career there and then, but he came back to race again and finished his career with Team Dimension Data. Now, one of his most stylish victories was definitely at that Tour de Suisse, where he glanced back to see that Cavendish had lost his wheel, turned his head back to the finish line, went from lead out man to sprinter, and duly won the stage. A class act and a very popular man both on and off the bike, and it'll be interesting to see what he does next. Now, there has been much speculation this season as to whether Salin Del Carmen Alvarado should go for the elite world title or stick to her original target, which was the under 23 category. I say was, because this time last week, Alvarado announced that she would step up to the elite championships in Switzerland in a couple of weeks' time. Now, with Mariana Voss ending her cross season early due to needing an operation, this definitely would have made things easier for the Dutch selectors. In fact, Voss has had a successful artery surgery, correcting a problem that she's known about for some time. It's expected to be around six weeks before she starts her road season for CCC Live. Team Ineos have announced their leaders for the Giro d'Italia and the Tour de France this year. Uh, Richard Carapaz will return to Italy to defend his Giro d'Italia title, whilst Egan Bernal, Geraint Thomas and Chris Froome, if he recovers, will focus on the Tour de France. Incidentally, Geraint Thomas also revealed last week that he will potentially give up socks after finishing his road career. He has ambitions to race triathlon, apparently. Meanwhile, Egan Bernal has said that he will reduce how many kilometres he does ahead of the Tour de France this year. So apparently, he did too many last year before, well, before winning the thing. Anyway, that doesn't seem to be going to plan so far, judging by his Strava. Uh, he posted this picture to Twitter last week, which shows a 270 kilometre ride at quite astounding average speed. And in fact, according to Velofax on Twitter, he's the rider who has posted the most kilometres to Strava so far this year. 2,638 in the first 15 days of the year, which puts him two ahead of Annemiek van Vleuten. Now, I wouldn't want to be one of her competitors this year because that is some mileage already. She's been out training with the Mitchelton Scott men's squad and probably giving them a hard time. Right, that is all for this week's GCN Racing News Show. Don't forget you can watch live coverage of the Tour Down Under right here on GCN Racing. Plus, starting on Sunday, the Tour de San Luis, where the likes of Peter Sagan and Julian Alaphilippe will make their season debuts. In the meantime, you have to check this next video out. Hank and round the world legend Mark Beaumont went bike packing around Patagonia. You can check that video out if you haven't done so already, down here. Bye for now.